Hey there, everybody. What's happening? Welcome to this episode of Press Start TV. Oh my gosh, we've got so many great things to go over with you. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is like going to be crazy. You know, we've got the games of February. Um, it's going to be good. We're going to do a fast fire round. We're going to throw these guys a bunch of news and information. Fast fire February. And we'll talk about that. Yep. And our favorite controllers and some of our not so favorite controllers. So we'll be getting into all that today. My name is Will. With us as always, Mr. Nine. Yep. And Mr. James. Hello. 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 Cheer 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 yeah. Uh, we did the then? whole episode. No, okay. no I'm not uh, <laughs> People would unsubscribe then. Yeah. I'm pretty sure everybody would unsubscribe, yeah. <laughs> including the British audience. Yes. No. Uh, they would be the first to go. All right, uh, so uh, games of February. We've got Assassin's Creed Chronicles coming out. Yes. You guys know anything That's about the Russia one, right? Yeah. Oh, isn't it like a bunch of different mini? Well, I think they're doing them piece by piece. Each game is like a chapter, yeah. and each chapter is a different country and time period. Russia is the so first. So is that like a star story? And then they did China. Oh, yeah, China. Was China was That's what I'm saying. It's chopped up, right? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like an episodic tales kind of thing. Yeah. Do you know the cool. time period on the Russian one? I don't know. I think I saw somebody with a gun. One of the people I saw pictured for the Chronicles has a gun, and it looks like way more like... That could be like anywhere between... It's like, like a bandolier and everything. 1700s to the it looks, early... It looks like a little more current than the other ones, though, so... I'm I like the, I, conceptually, that. I like the idea... Is, Assassin's Creed, one of the beauties of the game is the premise. Yeah. You get into the whole sneaking around stealth, blah, blah, blah. But having a situational base where it could be any cool situation that might not make it an old story mode, it's kind of a cool idea. For me, anyway. I think the setting is always totally the definitive part for me too. for Assassin's Creed. Like, Black Flag was my favorite because I apparently like being a pirate more than I like being Assassin. Yeah. Uh, Pirates are way cooler. Every Kim Wick was awesome. Okay. But yeah. So, Assassin's Creed Chronicles Dying Light is getting remastered with a bunch of stuff, right? It's getting a whole new DLC pack, the following, which is adding 250 levels, uh -huh. like new character levels, which is absurd. Wow. So, all new upgrade paths, all new weapons, new vehicle. This DLC is twice the size of both the maps from the first game. Uh, that's so good. That's huge. That's a pretty big so deal. So they're doing a full-on like enhanced edition that includes the game and the DLC, and oh, you can also delicious. buy it separately. I will say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's my favorite. That's yeah, my favorite. Yeah, this is my new favorite. Yeah. Um, I will say, if you haven't played Dying Light, now is the time to go buy the game because you get Absolutely. everything. Go pick it up. Uh, Naruto has a new game. Any fans? Anybody play the demo yet? Uh, I'm not a Naruto. It's pretty good. Yeah, I'm not like a huge fan or anything. anything. If you pre-order, you get two. Uh, the only thing I don't think about this, the pre-order bonus is you get two extra characters, full-fledged characters. So if you didn't pre-order it and you pick I'm it up, sure a couple of, I'm sure they'll release them like two months from now for like, five bucks. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I, we'll see. I but if they everybody, don't, everybody that's kind of that, like, yeah. yeah. That it's would suck. Move. That would suck. Yeah. yeah. But you know, it's pre-order. Because then you'd be playing them online and you'd get so jealous. But uh, but yeah, the fighting looks pretty cool and everything. And I like the like the, the big summons and yeah. larger than life over the top. It's a great series, big fan base. That's why they keep making them. And hopefully, uh, Same thing with Dragon Ball Z. yeah, very smooth yeah. fighting yeah. style too. Like you feel Whoa. like you're in the show at yeah. certain times if you're playing right. Speaking of the show, you're watching, and listening to Press Start TV. I'm Will. This is Nine. Yep. This is James. Hey. Talking about the games of February. Uh, Firewatch. Supposedly doing really really well. Yeah, that came, comes out this month. Um, we'll talk about that actually in our fast fire round, so we'll get more on that in a second. Unravel uh, <coughs> also coming out uh, from mixed reviews. Of this? Most of those are out. Yeah, this month I'm just talking about the games yeah, that are coming out. They're, they're out already, is what I'm saying. Right, these games are coming out in February. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about all the games that are coming out in February. It's uh, mixed reviews uh, from people who have played it. I guess. Yes. Yeah, a better way to put that. For Unravel. Firewatch has like, Firewatch every, just everyone's getting, stoked. Everybody <laughs> all hyped up. All right, we'll talk about Blues in a second, but um, I love the concept of Ravel, the, the guy, everything, great. Street Fighter Five. I haven't played it. I have a friend who's in the beta, though. Not even a fan of Street Fighter, and he says he loves it, so. It looks really cool. They've added a ton of new players. Oh, yeah. Um, which is always good for those games. Um, I think gameplay-wise, one of the things that they're, they're doing an odd to, I think, a lot of these games are coming out. Is the the conscientious, conscientious, say that word, uh, <laughs> efforts to uh, cater the game to esports and Street Fighter is a yeah, huge, definitely a fighting game built for esports. Yeah, I mean it kind of like was one of the original competitive games. So. Well, Capcom's got their own circuit uh, mm -hmm. that they do for mm -hmm. their World Championships, but uh, yeah, World League. I think Street Fighter Five is going to be one of those games. Uh, James, no game that you're excited about, Fire Emblems? Yeah, yeah, I'm totally stoked about that. I've always been a huge fan of the Fire Emblem <coughs> series. 
I didn't actually know until recently that they're splitting it into two different yeah. games, which yep. is like Pokemon Red and Blue, like pick your side. Um, oh, I love that. Uh, I think I'm going to side with, uh, I can't remember which what their name is right now, but the kind of red ones or whatever. But I'm, I'm really stoked about that. And uh, like you said, there's going to be just uh, localization, just going to be English this time, audio, Japanese subtitles no one will ever use. Um, yeah. Unless they're masochistic, but, but it's going to be great. That's a, that's a series that has a very loyal fan base. You know, before yeah. the last game, Awakening, they were going under. That they the, the company literally came to them and was like, this is your last one, so make it good. And they basically introduced everything that the fans loved about key entries in the series, and Awakening did amazing. And it, it actually boosted sales for the 3DS, and so I'm really excited for what they get to put into this one, because right. they're coming back from the brink. I think it's a great franchise they should definitely not get rid of. Um, yeah. People are love the characters. Permadeath is awesome for these characters that you love so much. Like there's, uh, it's just it has such a good old school feel to it. Yeah. And strategy, love strategy. So. We got old school Far Cry Primal coming out. Very old school. Very old school. Pre preschool. <laughs> um, Far Cry series as a whole. I mean, Far Cry Four is amazing. Yeah. Far Cry Three was Far amazing. Far Cry Four was. Okay. Yeah, Far Cry I, 3 I, was amazing. I was going to say, Far Cry 4 in the wake of Far Cry 3 is not as good for me. And just like, yeah, because Far Cry 3 Far had Cry a 3. twist that was just awesome. Yeah, And, and even just the trippy elements of Far Cry 3. Like, I, I, just, the tailwinds. I would say I would agree with that. It's a fun game. From a story yeah. perspective, I thought the gameplay was amazing and just a, just a top-notch game. So we'll see how Primal is. A lot of hunting and I don't know what the premise so, is. I think you get to befriend animals in this one too. I saw yeah, him like petting his own wolf and stuff. So animals. you got me there. Great yeah. job, guys. I'm in. And Plants vs. Zombies 2. Um, Garden Warfare is coming out this uh, month of February. So pick all those games up. It's going to be amazing. When we get back, we can talk about some fast fire stuff of all kinds of news right after this. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're just going to talk about games in February. Now we're going to talk about some news in kind of a fast setting. So I'll throw some headlines at you guys and you guys just kind of give me your opinion. You look very deep into thoughts. Mm -hmm. You should. Uh, nice. You just need a pipe and uh, it would be perfect. <laughs> I have to Dear God. Of the, like Sherlock Holmes type yeah. of thing. I just I want one that blows bubbles though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, uh, we'll talk about uh, first thing on the list is Batman uh, <coughs> Arkham Knight is now being canceled for the Mac and Linux. No shock. No shock, really. No, no one wants it after the PC release. I mean, no. come on. Two times. You want to try again? Twice. Twice yeah, they, they tried on the PC. And then they released it again. They apologized profusely and then patched released it, it again. Released it again, patched it's it again. still terrible. It's, it's still not working the way it's supposed to be. Bring Batman Arkham Knight, though. You. Bring it to the great game on me. <laughs> Bring it third time. Doesn't happen again. Yeah. Batman Arkham Knight on the console is just a bit. It's great. It's yeah. Awesome. Love it. Awesome. Huge game. Uh, Red Dead Redemption being taken off of Xbox uh, backwards compatibility, hmm. Xbox One, Xbox Live, whatever you call it. Why? What happened? Well, it is coming to backwards. It, it's coming. Uh, it just came out like they, they were basically the working on it. Glitched, didn't we? Yeah, the store had <laughs> it glitched. Some people like exploited that. And then, you know, how, we, how they do it. Exploited they exploit. it how? I'm not actually sure the technical. They found a workaround it. to get it to download to your console. Yeah, and, they, and then they released that information. I have no before. idea. Okay. They released that information on the internet, as like the gaming community tends to do, and they embrace them. They're like, "Hey, everybody else, do it!" And uh, everybody downloaded it and all that. And uh, of course, they took it off. They caught on to it, took it off. They're still planning to release it. Now, still gonna put it on there. Yeah. That was interesting. Um, yeah. Just curious to see is that a sign sure. of things to come, or just one of those? Oh, shows yeah, much people love Red Dead. Dead. And they were like, "Let's get it now." Yeah. I love get it while it's hot. Oh, yeah, I like that morning. I can't stand the game. Really? Yeah. I could. I hate Wild West stuff. I, I could oh. not get into it. I just, oh God, I love this. <laughs> John, John Marston is one of my favorite oh, just great. characters of yeah. all time. I love like how he used ten dollar words all the time, and people are just like, "You fancy, ain't you, boy?" He's like, "I reckon." You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's so good. I, I got a lot of things to talk about that, but we'll keep on moving. Uh, Doom has a May thirteenth release date. Woohoo! Finally, where's my beta? Mm. Yeah. Um, I've been waiting for that beta since Wolfenstein came out. Mm -hmm. That game's going to be cool, man. That game's going to be awesome. Yeah. At you least I hope. Too. Great. Yeah, what yeah. was the mode called again? Snap Map. Snap Map. Snap Map, yeah. Yeah, the map editor. That's going to be Which is yeah. essentially like Forge for Doom. But it looks great. It really does. I it's can't like wait awesome. to see some of the some of you guys uh, creating your own maps and letting others play it. I just think that that's going to be some really creative stuff. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, no Dark Souls had a new cinematic trailer. 
Yeah, um, shush, I haven't seen it yet. Did you, did you watch yeah, it? Yeah, I did. What'd you, know, you think? Like, yeah, it looks great. I mean, it's Dark Souls, man. Like, you guys uh, it's like the, a typical it is. every it's, other it's, Dark it's Souls It's an exposition. Entry. It shows you like a variety of enemies that are, are on the rise. Um, it has like a, like a pilgrimage of like, you know, those like the hunched over characters that are like trying to make it to the city and people are collapsing. Um, and the tagline is like, embrace the dark. Uh, as far as the enemies cool. go, like one of them was uh, Eldric Horrors riding some from the deep, so a little bit of Bloodborne, Bloodborne influence. We were talking about that earlier, and uh, yeah. the uh, yeah, it's, it looks I'm good. Just, I'm yeah. just excited because Mana Bar is back. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> no more numbered slots for your stupid magic spells. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, we talked about this earlier. Uh, Firewatch apparently is getting great reviews. Yes. It's, it, it's a very emotional, very... makes you feel like you're actually in this setting of the, the game. It, it uses that. like some of the best narrative ever, according to what I've read. So, atmosphere is, is on point. On point. The story's not the best, but the atmosphere and everything else is on point. In a game of that so, I mean, type, yeah, I love, that, that's one of the biggest those things. Those for atmosphere me. equals immersion. And yeah, that's kind of exactly. that's one of the best things yep. about a game. Um, Unravel also being met with mixed reviews, like we talked about earlier. Yeah, what do you think about that night? I know we, we saw that. I, at E3. I played it at E three. I played the what people got last week for the the trials, the, the two week, the yeah. two levels or whatever, and uh, I enjoyed it. E three, but we didn't know as much. Right. And so I was expecting nothing at that point. Yeah. And now people are saying that with the full game, it's emotional, but the, the story is what really holds it together. The puzzles aren't really there. There's okay. a couple challenging ones, but through it all, the game's not that difficult. You know, maybe it's meant for just to, to go through. I think it's just a casual title, and yeah. I think people were putting their hopes too high on being a puzzle game versus a story-driven game. Yeah. So... We'll see. Uh, a game I'm excited about. I'll definitely. I really want to play. Yeah, I want to play it too. Um, just really curious to see what it's all about. Um, the American Truck Simulator <laughs> has sold a bunch of copies. I know this is breaking news. You guys yeah. are just loving this. Everybody's book. dying to know how many copies they <laughs> sold. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Finally, you're watching Lucy on Press Start TV. I'm Will's nine. Yo, James. <coughs> um, Lego apparently is going the the uh, Force Awakens game that's coming out. Is apparently going to be explaining why C-3PO's arm is red. Yeah. What's that all? Yeah, there's a allude to it in the movie, but you never find out. No, he's just like, I must not recognize me. He must not recognize me with my broken arm. It shows Disney really like, uh, they're really good at tie-ins, man. It's really good just yeah. like uh, just doing something to, to make it so you want to play The Force Awakens because they're going to actually do stuff that's they're going to tell you things that you can get from the movie. Exactly. I mean, something like that. Fans are like... Going to eat it up. Eat that up. Even if you man. didn't play Lego games, even if you were elitist about it up until this point, you're going to drop it. I mean, yeah. let's, let's think about that for a second. Honestly, Lego Star Wars is the It's best like, who anyway, cares so. why his arm is red? A lot of people yeah. care. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm red. sitting there thinking, like, what the heck is wrong? What to? If it was <laughs> three PO's arm. If it was any other franchise, I wouldn't why? care. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, it's red, whatever. Yeah. And now it's like... All of a sudden, I want to play this Lego game just to see what the heck's yeah. going on. Yeah. yeah, I was going to play it anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah cause oh, like, they're all I mean, good. Yeah. It's going to be hilarious. Like, Star exactly. Wars. Exactly. Uh, yeah, there was right. a Mirror Edge 2 trailer that come, came out. Um, Catalyst. Came, did you watch that? Yeah, yeah. It actually looked awesome. Uh, me and I were talking about that earlier because you said the original one you didn't really care for. Yeah, yeah I couldn't get into it. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like this one, I feel like this one, I, I kind of felt the same way. It felt like a little bit. Land. Like, I like the gameplay a lot because I love like parkour, free running stuff. I like the concept. Exactly. I just didn't like the execution. This one, because graphics have come so much farther, the story looks way more immersive. And okay. like, we're, we're talking about Until Dawn. With well, we'll finish that up right when we get back. When we get back, we're going to talk about some controllers, our favorites and not so favorites, right after this. Welcome back. Uh, we were just talking about our fast fire round, a bunch of news, games of February, and now we'll get into some controllers. Uh, guys, this conversation just came up before we started uh, this episode, so I just want to kind of continue it. We are talking about the Steam controller. <laughs> and... Not your favorite controller. <laughs> and your distaste for it. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, Steam's great and all that, I just... That controller, I, I got my hands on it at E3.9, you know, I played it I actually. Loved it. I thought it was great. You loved it, I hated it. I, I just did not it yet. like it. And for most of my stuff online, I, I usually would use my wired 360 controller because you 
that X Fire mod that lets right. you use it on a lot of stuff. But I'd, I'd be interested to try it. Yeah, I mean, we, we were talking about what was the game? Um, Towerfall. The division, actually. We'll get oh, into the division, that. the division. Um, next week, but we'll talk about that more later, actually. But it, the, conceptually, it was like, you know, the control PC gamers are used to their tactile feel of their. Right, yeah. But, but I think people, even the PC players, are starting to get more into the controllers. Why is that? I, I think uh, something we said earlier uh, immersive. It's just immersive, like when you have that controller in your hand, it's like less of like having to move around a bit. It's more convenient yeah. at the same time because you can lean right back. there in the palm of your like, hand. That's something I agree I with both of those statements because it's just less thinking of this mm -hmm. and more enjoying of that. Yeah, right. it's intuitive. Now, I mean, there are some games which are way better with a mouse and keyboard, which in their respects belong with a mouse and keyboard. Yeah. Maybe like a and StarCraft or where you have 500 commands, you've got to yeah. fire off. Yeah, well, yeah wow. and, like StarCraft, like strategy style games. Well, like like I, commanding. That's, where I originally got understand. my X-Fire mod was for World of Warcraft, and it was, it was like, it worked for the most part, except for, like you said, all those right. spells and icons you have, and to filter through them, I had to, like, hold down different right. bumpers, and I used it for daily quest grinding, yeah. never for PvP or PvE, right. uh, but, but just for the sole reason, you said convenience, just so I could lean back, because, like, sitting like this, my back hurt and everything, but I could, like, sit back from my computer and just, like, yeah. you know, no brain. Well, and going off that same topic, when Final Fantasy XI came out for PS2, mm -hmm. I bought it, I was like, yes, I can use my controller. It was so awkward to use a controller for an MMO. I was yeah. like, nope, I'm just going to plug my keyboard <laughs> into my PS2 and go, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, StarCraft's a perfect example, because that's a game, you especially if you put commands fast enough on a controller for yeah, a game yeah, like that. Yeah. You can try. You can play. You but can if you watch their fingers. Right or or better better. Better. Um, but you know, some controllers, like the Steam controller, again, I just missing the mark for me. Um, what are some of your favorite controllers, James? We'll start with you. Uh, 360 actually it was it was great. I think it, it really uh, just, just having those trigger buttons, man, uh, really yeah. like changed the game for everybody. Yeah. Like I said, it felt like I was pulling a trigger. So for first person shooters, that's always been like kind of king now. And even you see PS4. Doing it now with the, the little, little, little flip up yeah. there, you know, it's it's awesome. Um, and, and the 360 controller coming off the Xbox controller was like a yeah. miles. Yeah. Well, because the above. first one, like that, that was basically difference. played for people, like every girl I ever played with was like, it's too big for the hands, you know. <laughs> and even uh, the small controller were still a fairly good sized controller. Yeah, yeah, they were they were hefty. Um, since it comes to how self was too. I remember uh, when that first came out, Xbox had pamphlets and like it was like fifty reasons why you should get an Xbox. I loved it because they were bogus reasons. Like it said, uh, use it use it for a booster seat for your grandma when she's driving. That was great. <laughs> that was when Crash Bandicoot was their spokesperson. So, one of your favorites is the three sixty controller nine. How about you? Yeah, my favorite controller of all time is the original DualShock controller. Ooh, from the PlayStation. From the original PlayStation. Mm. Nice. I, yeah, I, it just that, that was kind of right the controller my, the first that time started I, things. The first time yes. that I picked it up, I was just like, "This just feels right." Yeah. Like the placement of everything, the way the, the, the shape of the controller, the, the whole nine yards, it was just perfect. Yeah. Right. Yes, I did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it was like it was, they had it with the gamer in mind, you know? Right. Well, and the original PlayStation controller didn't have the, the dual analog sticks. Right. Had it was just that weird pass. looking boomerang. Yeah. Controller. Yeah. And it was it was one of the first ones I think that looked like, like the looked, it looked serious, you know. Yeah. Like it looked like like N sixty four and all that stuff at the time. Like all of them kind of had like they played well, but they looked goofy. Yeah, those controllers did. And PlayStation was like DualShock was the first one that was like yeah. I would say my very favorite controller of all time by a very slim margin, the original NES controller. That's a that's a very good choice. Yeah. It's I mean, very simple. Sure. It's very compact. It was two perfect. Point. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. And, and always. You can do a lot with that controller. Oh, man, it was amazing. It, it was so much fun. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, stories about that. Let, let's talk about our least favorite. James, we'll go back to you. Oh. All right, now I'm throwing it over to you. The 360 controller. The 360 controller. I hate, absolutely hate the 360 controller. And I know that I'm a very small percentage of people that hate that controller. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. I despise it. I yeah. do not like the shape of it. I do not like the layout of the thumbsticks. It's it, very different. It irks the Especially daylight. Especially being like over <laughs> here and like that. Um, for me, it was intuitive, but yeah, like that. Yeah, I can use it. Don't get me wrong. I can use it just fine, but mm -hmm. I hate the way it feels. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it was, uh, 
I was never like a huge fan of the GameCube controller. It just didn't feel like. You know it what I mean? Like, it, it yeah. didn't feel reactive enough for me. Like I didn't everything like was the mushy. That was yeah, that was, it was so they're mushy. all so narrow and, and wide. And, and like it would tall. make like a noise when I press like the prongs. Like, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It took a while to warm up to that controller. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Best thing about the controller is the C stick. It was all. It was Sucker. all over the place though, like that controller, like there's just buttons everywhere. Same thing with the game, or the 64 controller. Yeah. It was just a little weird. They're all uh, different shapes. Like, yeah. For me, Nintendo was like just going all over the wall. You got like oval buttons up here, and a big circle button, and a C stick. I didn't know where to hold Kirby. it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I didn't know where to hold it. Roll, boss. Or at first, you know? Like you don't know whether to like yeah. place your hands like this, or do you like... It was for weird. me, I'm going to have to... The worst for me has got to be the Duke. Uh, just the, the original Xbox yeah, controller, yeah, dude. Yeah, it's, it's just it's a out monster. of control. You could kill people. Who I was, said that I was, was gonna say that was a self defense. It's self defense, whatever. Yeah, like you could tie two of those together and use them as bolos. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you couldn't look, even if you had big hands, it was still weird. Mm -hmm. Like some of the buttons placed way down here is just like I don't get it. Yeah, um, it was awful. Anyway, if the center was kind of ugly too, it didn't really have any functionality. Right there, yeah. Like, bam, Xbox right <laughs> in your face. I get it. Like that, that was like most of the controller. Check us out on PressStartTV.com. That's all the time we have for you. Again, it's PressStartTV.com. Thank you as always so much for joining us. Until next time, we'll see you. Later.